So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Magdalena Velsetskas and I'm a project officer at ESPD. Uh, I'm responsible for technology in our organization. And I welcome you in this uh, wonderful workshop uh, about music. It's a music workshop about uh, which will be led by Professor Frank Lyons, who is a Dean of Research and Impact in Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences in Ulster University. He's also a composer and researcher who did over 150 performances. He has also developed an international network of research collaborations in the field of creative technology and disability under the Inclusive Creativity Banner. And he will present some technologies that he's using in the process of art creation, also with persons with uh, disabilities. So Frank, uh, please, I give you the floor. Okay, many thanks um, for that kind welcome. And thank you to EASP, ENCC and the Cope Foundation for the invitation. Um, and thanks everyone for joining. I've got quite a, a lot to get through, so I'm just going to um, move pretty quickly. I'll be sharing content, and which is video and audio, but I just thought I'd give a quick introduction. So I'm just going to begin sharing my screen. Okay, so hopefully you can see um, the first slide here. So. The, the, the title of the conference is The Art of Inclusion, and I'm going to speak about how accessible music technology can uh, encourage and enhance inclusion. My own background, I've been doing this type of work for a very long time, beginning in 1999 with a, a very prominent um, arts and disability organization called the Drake Music Project. I'm going to talk about technologies that I've used in collaboration with a number of musician colleagues, both with and without disabilities. So a couple of the ensembles that I have worked with and founded is the Wired Ensemble. Um, and since 2003 until the present day, I've been working at Ulster University in terms of researching and teaching uh, in this particular field. Another ensemble that I founded that I still work with um, is Acoustronic. And then more recently, um, last year, um, we founded the Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland. And we'll talk about that in a bit more detail shortly. So I've worked on this concept, which we entitled Inclusive Creativity for some time. And the, the overall aim is to explore creative technologies to level the playing field for people of all ages and abilities who wish to compose and perform music. So inclusion is at its core. So I'm going to focus on a very um, small um, number of pieces of technology today. It's a huge and vast field that we now have at our disposal. So I could take hours and hours, but I want to focus on um, apps for tablets and phones that are widely accessible, you know, on the, for iTunes for, uh, and for Android devices. The reason why I'm focusing on these is because they're, they're relatively affordable. So they're quite cheap. They're either free or quite cheap. And I think that's really important um, to make sure they're widely available. I'm also going to look at some of the features that make them accessible to people with physical disabilities and intellectual disabilities. It's all about um, a, a way to rapidly engage people. Another key feature of all, uh, that you're going to see is the idea that there's interoperability between platforms and between these apps, which I think is important when you come to um, look at group work. You know, it's all about inclusion. So nine times out of 10, we're working in, in groups of musicians, ensembles and so on. So it's important that the technology, the technology speak to each other. And most of what I'm going to look at today follows this very simple design principle of point, press and play. And it focuses on some musical material, which we refer to as loops and samples. 
I'm going to focus on a lot of the um, technology that we're using um, currently, but I'm also going to point to what I see as being the future of this type of accessible music technology. And I know some of my colleagues are actually on the webinar today um, and I'll refer to them, but some of the, the, the technologies we're currently looking at that we think will be the future are around IGAs and total hands-free control of the types of applications that we're looking at. Of course, immersive technology is, is a, a huge um, future development. So we've got VR, AR, and DMR, and I'll show you some of that. And this idea of custom design technologies as opposed to industry standard technologies that you'll find um, on the uh, iTunes store, for instance. So today I'm going to work through a number of pieces of technology and I'm happy after this to share some links um, and some more information. So I'm going to look at technologies entitled Bloom and Trope, Thumb Jam, Launchpad and Remix, audio share and borderlands, some really interesting and engaging titles. And as I say, I'll put some of these slides up later. So I'm just going to go straight into the first um, piece of technology uh, that I want to look at. So hopefully um, this screen will change uh, and I'll get to, I've, I use a large number of these musical apps, as you're going to see. I'm going to begin with uh, this app, which we call Bloom. Hopefully you can see that screen. Can someone let me know if you can yes, see? Yes, we see and we hear some music. So oh, if you want, great. so okay. if you. That's great, thank you, thank you. So this is a this is a, an app called Bloom, which was designed um, by the very famous electronic musician uh, Brian Eno, and it's yeah, it's a really beautiful, um, very simple application to get started with. So you've got this beautiful, beautifully coloured screen, and essentially, if you tap somewhere on the screen, you get a note, and you also get this visual response, and that note will repeat in the form of a loop and you can add to it and it will create different layers of sound. It's very, very engaging. Um, the sounds are incredibly beautiful. So it's actually a very relaxing app. And as I say, it's got the audio and the visual aspect to it, which is really, really important. And as I say, you can build up layers of sound And this also works very well in an ensemble of musicians because it, it, it's very effective in terms of laying a foundation for other musical layers to go on top. I click this little button at the top of the screen, you can see um, there are different sort of color schemes and different um, note collections that you can then use. Just start a new one. Very simple. I'll clear that one. Start a new. And because I've cho chosen a different, um, a different format here, the note choices will be different, and the color scheme is different. So it can be very sparse or very busy. Now the beauty of this is, as you can see, it's it's this idea of point press and it plays some musical pre-designed um, musical sound. So that's 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 an app called Bloom, as I say. And it's got a it's got a, a, a related app um, designed by the same people and it's called Trope. Um, just going to and it's similar in, but this, you actually trace shapes, as it says on the screen here, to produce similar um, resultant sounds. So again, it's very engaging. It can be, it can be really appealing very, very quickly to um, musicians who uh, want to begin to make music. You're right, you're in 
potential. We'll see what they sound like in music. It became very relaxing, very long drone type sounds, which again are very effective as backgrounds for other uh, types of uh, musical application to go on top. And the important thing is have all of these, all of these musical applications. Um, do have many, many layers of, of depth and really only have an opportunity to scratch the surface of each Frank, other. Frank, I'm sorry. Do you think you could make it a bit quieter, the music, because it's very loud and uh, it's a bit hard to hear you then? Okay, it's difficult to speak over yet, yeah. Okay. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to finish with that app. Okay, so what I'd suggest that we do um, is that in between the discussion of each musical ap application, that if you've got any questions or, or if you've got any comments, um, I'm happy to take them in between each sort of demonstration. Apologies that we can't be more interactive with it, but you know, there's lots of um, scope for you guys to explore these um, apps yourselves. So um, I just thought I would take a quick break here before um, I move on to the next one, if anyone's got any questions. Just to say that all of these apps are widely available, um, either free or very, very affordable. Uh, you can very, very quickly download them. They're available for iPads and um, Android and, and Apple phones. So Uh, you can uh, type the question uh, in the chat box, uh, or it, I think it will be the easiest, or you can, uh, since we are not so many, unmute yourself and uh, there is a question. Just wondering if they are accessible to vir uh, visually impaired facilitator. I find it tricky as the accessibility features often cl clash. Yes, um, yeah, some of, some of these are difficult for, for visually impaired, although, as I say, um, I, we, we have done some work with, with visually impaired musicians. Um, and some of, these, some of these applications do have elements of haptic feedback. Um, but because, they're, because they all kind of work on a flat surface, people with visual impairments can, you know, as long as they can basically hear the results, something like that Bloom application because it, it uh, encourages improvisation um, is really very effective. Um, so, you know, so you've essentially got that blank canvas of, of a tablet to work on and it's much more um, flexible in terms of your, you, the way you interact with, with the app. So something like Bloom I find or Trope that I've just demonstrated is very effective. Some of the other apps that I'm going to look at are probably slightly more difficult, um, but again, not completely inaccessible to people with visual impairments because they very quickly can use touch and feel to find their way around the tablet screen. Really good question though, thank you. There is also a comment uh, that uh, what the person likes about Bloom is that the vertically of pitches shown by the visual feedback is something that can be quickly communicated to participants. Um. Yeah, and, and, and much of what we're looking at, I mean, you, you can go as deeply as you need into it. They can be used purely for enjoyment, but actually if you want to go that bit deeper and work with people and teach them about music and musical features and expression and so on, then all of these apps have that those extra um, layers of depth that you can explore. And people often ask, again, it's a very important principle. You can, you do you learn to play um, iPads and, and these musical apps? And you absolutely do. The musicians we work with spend years learning how to play 
these musical apps and I'll show you some video later of you know some of the, our musicians working in a professional environment and how effective they can be. Um, so this second app is, is called uh, Thumb Jam. And again, I thought it would be a, a, a useful app um, because, you know, again, it can be played by, I'm using an Apple Pencil, it could be used, you know, your fingers, it could be used sort of, you know, a, a head pointer or, or anything essentially you can interact with, with the screen with. So as you can see, um, you've, you've essentially got the screen divided up into these um, these stripes and each stripe essentially has a musical note on it so so it's got a like a guitar sound going but I can very quickly change the instrument sound so if I go to a cello it immediately changes and I can decide how many notes are on the screen at any one time. So this is a cello sound. Now, you'll hear me adding vibrato just by shaking a pencil on the screen. And that's again one example of where um, ex musical expression can be explored, you know. So anyone interacting with this can... Create vibrato, just the way a, a musician playing an acoustic instrument can be expressive. So, as I say, you can choose different instruments here. As I said, it's cello. So. You can also change not just the instrument, but you can change the musical notes or the scales or the chords. So, um, if I just introduce a, a blues scale, you get a different. Um, different set of notes that you can then play with. I'll change the sound as well to um, maybe a flute sound. So again, you can improvise really freely and create some very effective um, sounds pretty quickly, but you can also spend a lot of time learning how to use this in detail. So at the minute, it's, it's responding to touch on the screen. I can also introduce a, a loop, a pre-recorded loop um, that allows me to um, put something on the screen that gives me an accompaniment. So if I go to uh, these loops, I'll put in a, a drum loop. So it's a pre-recorded loop drum pattern. I'll go back to my synthesis. So now I can play across this loop. Again, it's very effective. You can essentially create your own accompaniment if you were playing solo or in a very, very small ensemble. Um, you can also, you could have multiple players using one screen, probably difficult in today's climate where we need to respect social distancing, but however you can um, split the screen into uh, a number of different sections, up to four different sections so that you could then have uh, you could then have one player you could start the loop the drum loop and you could one player playing organ So 
as you can see, there's 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 quite some depth to an application. The other brilliant thing about all of these um, apps that we're looking at today is that you can actually record the results of whatever you're either improvising or whatever you've rehearsed and learned as a piece of music. So it covers composition and it covers performance in a way that you know lots of people like to explore both composition and performance. So it's this idea of, and I'll talk about this quite a lot when we're working with people with disabilities, whether they're intellectual or physical or, or combination of disability, the idea that you can tap into your creativity as a composer, but at the same time you're developing technological expertise you know, in terms of how you use um, the, the technology to essentially release your creativity. I think that's really important. And also, I just repeat, with each of these applications, each of these apps, there are multiple layers of depth. We could, I could spend probably, you know, four or five hours just explaining each app individually. Um, so um, that, that's, that's really the, the, the thumb jam. We're talking about expression again. And each of these apps do have the ability to add expressive effects like echoes and, and reverbs and so on. And I'll come to these effects and how they can be used expressively when I'm looking at some of the other applications. Uh, so I think that's, that's really a, a good sort of overview of the Thumb Jam app. It's widely used by a lot of the um, organizations that we would work with, like Drake Music, for instance, or like Share Music in Sweden, or, or our own Acoustronic guys. And as, again, you'll see some footage of, of the musicians that we work with using these apps as we, as we go along. Um, so as I say, that's that's the Thumb Jam app. So Frank, again, we have two questions. Yeah, perfect. Go is ahead. that a good moment? Yes, it is. I was just going to break, yeah. Oh, sorry. So first question is, uh, have you come across enjoyable, affordable, more tactile surfaces, interfaces for these apps? We have found the glass tablet surfaces to be cold. That's the mm -hmm. first question. Okay. So as you, as you say, I think the, the design of some of the apps actually requires a very smooth, probably not very tactile surface. Um, but again, a colleague of, of mine, a PhD researcher, Lewis Smith, who I think is on this call, is investigating the whole concept of, of tactility, but probably not in relation to um, the, the, the iPad app. What, what might work is um, if, you, if, you've, if you ever you know, try out, you know, the screen covers that you can get, they're kind of a, a clear, very thin plastic. Um, they're probably slightly more tactile than the, the, the normal phone or um, iPad or tablet screens that give you a bit more response. But as I say, the, the apps are designed to, to really work with a, you know, a smooth screen, but it's something that you could experiment with, maybe different types of overlay that you normally use to protect your screen, but which might be a bit more tactile, but also allow the, the apps to function. Thank you, Frank. And there is the second question, uh, which is more maybe general. So I can maybe ask it now, but you can yep. reply to it now or later. It's like if you could uh, share some information on music apps to use the, to uh, work with children with intellectual disabilities with a focus as music therapy. Um, mm -hmm. So this can be replied now or maybe later, however you think it fits better. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, I think what, what, I, what I'd really like to do is, is share a, a resource, you know, a, a, a pool of web links, for instance, at the end, and we can kind of look at some of these. But yeah, I mean, with, for, for we've, we've worked with lots of young people in particular, um, you know, with, with different types of intellectual disability. Um, and the, what, we, what we find is something that gives you a very immediate musical result is probably a really good way in so you know even something like this app um thumb jab you know the idea that you can kind of run your finger you know up and down and get very impressive musical results very quickly 
um, you know, I think that's a very engaging way to start and get an immediate musical result. Something like Bloom that we looked at previously can be very useful if you want to create a very calm musical atmosphere, but some other young people just want to have a bit more a bit more oomph, a bit more excitement. And the next app that I'm going to show you, um, which is called Launchpad, probably is, is more relevant for, for, for young people. Um, and so I'll, I'll maybe just move on to that and then we can revisit that question. Thanks. So is that okay, yeah? Okay, if I move on now, yeah? Yes, 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 thank you. Perfect, okay. So this, this next app, again, is, is widely available. I think it's free to download. And obviously, it's got one of these sort of in-app um, payment options where you can add to the, the, the sounds and so on and, and the, the options that you've got. But just as I was saying, about, you know, some younger people might be more um, impressed with different styles of music, like dance music, for instance. And this Launchpad app, um, provides a really nice platform, very colorful platform, but you know, and it also gives you lots of preset examples so that you don't have to start from scratch and create your own sounds and your own layers. From um, you've got something to play with immediately that's very responsive. So, this is um, this is Launchpad, as I say, and it's got I've just loaded um. A, an example that's called trance, you can see it at the top in the middle of the screen here, um, which is really a representation of the trance music style. And what you'll see is you've got the screen broken down into a grid of individual boxes. And in each box, you've essentially got a little loop of music. Um, and each sort of color that you see on the screen represents a different type of musical loop or a different instrument. So for instance, if I just press on this drum pattern, you can hear right away, it's very up-tempo, very engaging drum loop. And, that, and you can see it lights up when you press it and it's not listening to it. I'd have to remember that. Yeah, so essentially what I'm saying is that the, the different colors have different instruments and different loops. And also, as you can hear, it's probably much more engaging to young people. It's a more contemporary style. Um, and I'll just, I'll just work through a couple of different ways in which you can um, work with this particular app. So as I say, you can press one little square in the grid at a time, or you can select multiple um, multiple uh, loops to play simultaneously. And I'll just create a little piece of music as we go along here. everything you do here so I, I'm not actually recording this but I'll show you how that works in a minute and so you can also be very expressive because you've not only have you got all these individual sounds that you can mix and match they're all color coded so it's very you know very quickly you're able to see which type of sound is, is being used but you can also then add this extra level of expression using the effects which I'll click on down here and there are different types of effect that you hear 
um, DJs and producers uh, using a lot. And again, that's why it has a lot of appeal to, to younger people because everything you do sounds like their favorite producer or their favorite DJ. So, you know, that that's a really engaging aspect. So if I just demonstrate some of this expression that's available from these effects, um, I'll play a little. I have to... get the idea there's a lot of of um, special effects that you can add to each of the individual um, loops and you know hours if not days if not weeks of experimentation potential there um you know everyone can kind of learn which each special effect adds or takes away you can create different sort of volume levels for each track as well uh, so it's very very flexible and you can add sort of filtered sounds You know, we've and we we've worked with musicians. There's one one guy in particular, an acoustronic young 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 guy called Sean Healy, who's you know spent years learning how to use Launchpad. You know, and he uses Thumb Jam as well. But some of the actual um, music that he can make and express, add extra expression with these special effects is quite breathtaking. He's really learned to to use these effects with the, the different loops in a really quite um, impressive and very professional way. As I say, there are a lot of um, other uh, aspects to this. As I say, you can change tempo. Um, you can actually, as I say, I'll just show you. So that's basically a very sort of um, uh, modern dance influence, but you can, these are all sort of pre-available sets of, um, I suppose musical styles, and this one's a more sort of um, ethnic type of style, more sort of um, Eastern instruments, for instance, that you can hear. to a lot of people when they're using this technology is you, you, you can hear that rhythmically the way the software is designed um, it, it allows great precision in terms of when a particular loop, uh, loop begins and ends it's called quantization and it's used a lot in professional musical circles so essentially we're just you know people often ask the question are you are you giving too much assistance to the musicians who might have disabilities but actually all we're doing is taking advantage of the types of technological um, innovation that professional musicians use in studios all around the world every hour of every day. Everyone uses um, this idea of, of quantization to allow really precise starts and finishes um, on, on their productions. And the other great thing is I, I, there's some of the musicians we work with essentially They've created their own YouTube channel. So very quickly you can record. So 
So I've just recorded that very uh, short sequence. And if you I now click on recordings, you'll actually see this, um, the recording that I've just made. And I can play it. So it recorded precisely what I played on the interface. And the other great thing is you've now got this share function. So you can share the audio, we can share the video to your YouTube channel or to your Facebook page. And so there's this real kind of sense of, of um, empowerment and ownership that any musician with essentially any type of ability um, can take advantage of. Um, and, it, and it's great. Creative people like to be creative, but they also like to have a, a record of what they created and to share that record. So you get these really high quality um, options from a, an app like Launchpad where you can share your work. I think that's really, really important. So I think I've um, covered quite a bit with, with Launchpad in particular that I showed you the ideas, the expression that you can add effects. There's another very similar app to Launchpad and it's called um, Remix Live. I'll show you if I can just see it. Um, Again, very similar, very similar in appearance in terms of screen is broken up into a grid. You can use these um, small fragments. So again, very, as you can see, some people prefer Launchpad, others prefer this. Um, again, you can take advantage of a lot of different um, styles that uh, producers have put together. So really, you know, such a huge, um, resource for musicians um, to explore and such a, 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 a number of different ways to be creative with apps like this. So I thought that was really useful. Um, the one thing that I, I'll just take that out. One thing that I do want to also talk about is instead of using these um, pre-existing sets of, of sounds, you can also um, create your own sound. So and some of the compositions we, we've we worked with, um, we wanted to allow our musicians to bring in sounds that they've recorded themselves or that we recorded as a group. So, you know, you could do a lot of um, really interesting, um, you could do a sound walk, for instance, and record things as you're moving around, then actually bring them into Launchpad and perform using those sounds. Um, and I'll just give you an example. So essentially what I've got here is a blank screen. So if I, I go into this pad, all, what you see down the right hand side are, are sound recordings that we've made or that I've made myself. So they're not the pre, um, pre-loaded sound packs that, that I've demonstrated thus far. So here's a good example. And this is a sound. These were sounds that we used in a piece that I'm gonna show you a little clip of later. Um, that my group, group Acoustronic, uh, worked on. So what you're seeing me doing here is essentially assembling um, a, a, a little grid made up of my own sounds, which you'll hear now. So you, you can be much more experimental and you can be much more, um, uh, uh, you, can, you can play to your own sound preferences if you follow this approach. So are there any questions about this Launchpad app or, or some of the similar apps that I've looked at? No, I think there are no questions related this up. Perfect. Um, as you can see, um, I'm really moving very quickly through the apps. As I say, I could spend hours on each one. So I'm really just scratching the surface and I hope I'm not moving too quickly for people, but I'm, you know, I'm really happy to follow up um, later on after the workshop. 
Um, but again, it just shows you how flexible and how much scope and potential you can find in each of these apps. One app that I find really important because if we're really, the musicians that, that I work with are really keen to, um, to work a lot with their own sounds. So sounds that they've recorded themselves. It could be their voices. It could be sounds that they've recorded outside in nature, you know, wind, rain. And, and rather than have this sort of very conventional music approach where you've got drums and bass and keyboards and guitars, a lot of people like to be more experimental and create what we refer to as soundscapes. So, you know, you can put together a soundscape which tells a story of a walk in nature, for instance, using sounds that you've recorded yourself. And in using um, tablets and phones, it's sometimes quite difficult to get your own sounds into the apps so that you can then perform using them. And I find this app, which is called Audio Share, is really important. I can, I can source sounds from my Dropbox or I can record directly into Audio Share and then share those sounds with any of the apps that I've demonstrated thus far. So for instance, I've now just opened Audio Share. So you can, I've just chosen a little sound here, which is called Harmonica 2. So I'll play it first of all, check what it is. <laughs> This was this is a sound where we worked on a piece that tried to create or recreate sounds of um, southern African Namibia, and this was a this was a folk instrument. So you can hear this little kind of folk harmonica from Namibia, and we wanted to use this in, for instance, launch pad. So this allows me to then transfer this very quickly across into uh, the Launchpad app. Okay, import. So then it becomes available. You can see Harmonica 2, and I can add that into my little grid and then use it in the performance or the composition. <laughs> So I think that's a really powerful tool, and as I say, um, in audio share, you can, I, I can sort of uh, download um, lots of individual sounds, samples from any of these libraries, like my Dropbox folders and so on. Or, you know, if we're working on a piece, we would have a, a shared Dropbox where where musicians can load different sounds that they prefer and we can all sort of draw upon them. So I find that this um, audio share app is really um, quite powerful when it comes to um, that flexibility to record and to capture and to use different sound samples that you may have created yourself. Okay, I can see time is marching on. So um, the, the last app that I'm gonna look at is an app called Borderlands. And again, a lot of the work that we do, um, you, could, you could refer to as probably more experimental. It's, and it allows a, a more narrative approach. When we work with musicians with, with dis disabilities, often a really good way to capture ideas is to think of a story. And so therefore you probably can't often or don't, always um, have the ability to tell a story just using um, drums and bass and keyboards. So sometimes you want, might want to introduce sounds that you've recorded that have a very um, a clear association with a story, you know, so it could be, it could be cars passing you in the street, it could be trees, birds singing, and, and so, but you don't always want to just play those sounds as you recorded them, you, sometimes you want to manipulate them and be expressive with them. So we use this um, other app here, which is called Borderlands. And again, you, what you can see here is a blank screen. You, I'm just moving this um, little rectangle around the screen. This is actually a sound file. Um, 
can see a little waveform that's being recorded here. And you can introduce as many of these sound files onto the screen as you want to use in a piece. But rather than play the sound file back as you recorded it, you get the opportunity to explore a, 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 an approach which we call granulation. So essentially you break the sound file up into tiny little granules of sound and play it back in different ways. And you'll see this little, if I double tap the screen, you'll see this little circle approaching. And if I move the circle on top of the sound file, So you can hear the, the little circles essentially um, tap into the sound file that you've introduced and allow you to create um, slightly transformed, probably more expressive sounds. The other great thing about this is it's, you've got a lot of preset examples to play with. You don't, you have to start from scratch on, on your own. So again, if I sort of load an example up here with a number of different. <laughs> So it's very, um, it's very engaging quite quickly, and it also allows you to do endless possibilities for improvisation, endless possibilities to introduce your own types of sound and your own combinations of sound. So again, we find that as a, it's a really important tool to provide um, almost like, like a wash of sound over which you can introduce maybe more conventional instrument sounds and so on. So a really, really powerful tool. You can introduce your own sound samples or you can use some of the preset examples that um, other people have, have created so that you're not starting from, from scratch yourself each time. So again, I think that's really important. So are there any queries about any? I'm just going to move on in a minute and just show you one or two very short examples of how we've used um, some of these uh, apps that I've looked at today. Um, in live performance in a kind of professional environment. But if there's any further questions or comments at this point. Mm, I don't see any, so maybe there was one uh, privately sent to you. <laughs> but maybe let's watch first because we have just five minutes left. So I propose that we first watch what you want to show us, Frank, and then when we still have time, we will ask last questions. Is it okay? Yeah. Perfect. So this is a little example. So we worked on a piece, it was a, a commissioned piece, uh, which we called Non Zero Sum. And it was for the acoustronic musicians who all use electronic instruments in the form of iPads and some some of the apps were running on uh, MacBook computers and, it, and the other four members of the ensemble were a professional string quartet and we worked collaboratively on this piece called Non Zero Sum and we performed it in London twice, we performed it in Dublin, we performed it in Lisbon so it, you know the, the group actually went on tour with this piece but it shows you again you'll see um, me working uh, with coloured cue cards, for instance. So the colours that on the little pieces of card um, corresponded with different colours in, for instance, the Launchpad app that you just experienced. So let me just kind of show you this, this little extract so that you can hear it. Let me start from scratch.
those extra, that's, that's a little extract from a piece called Non-Zero Sum. And you can see that combination of acoustic instruments and electronic instruments and the, the musicians from Acoustronic working with the Benny Eunice string quartet, you know, in a very sort of high pressure um, professional situation. The last little clip I'm going to show you is a, a piece um, by a colleague of mine who's on the call, Lewis Smith, which shows you how we're starting to combine the, the tablet um, based technologies, so the apps that we've just looked at, with some of the newer VR technologies. And it shows you um, the young guy, Sean Healy, actually conducting the musicians using a system that we've developed. Uh, their colleague of mine, Dr. Denise White, um, developed at Ulster called Conductology, where you can actually work uh, in a way uh, as a conductor with musicians playing electronic instruments. So this is a little clip from the Open Youth Orchestra of Ireland performance last year, which shows you the combination of what we have now and what we've got in future to play with. Okay, so I think I'll end it there. Hopefully you can, you can see that last clip shows you um, a whole orchestra of musicians using iPads, using the apps that we've just looked at, but it's also exploring the new potential of virtual reality to explore not just sound, but also the visual aspect of how you, you know, we all work in a very sort of multimedia way these days and the combination of, of visual, audio, and perhaps even movement, um, you know, is, is really, spectacularly exciting for us as, as creatives. So that's it. I'm happy to take any questions or get into discussion. I'll just stop sharing my screen. Are there any questions? The, uh, there was one from before. Which apps would you recommend the most for music therapy of uh, kids with intellectual disabilities? And maybe when you'll be replying, there'll be more questions uh, written in the chat. Yeah, yeah. So again, I think it probably depends on the, the personality of, of the person that you're working with. As a music therapist, you know, something like that blue map that I showed right at the start. And I, I'm happy to put a little kind of short information sheet together on this and I can forward it to any of the participants on the call. But again, depending on the personality, something like Bloom is very engaging. It's quite easy to, to begin with. And um, it creates these very beautiful, very calm, very still sounds and gives you a lot of um, scope for, for creativity. So I think that's one example that we found really effective. And then again, just depending on, on, on the level um, of, of ability or sense of adventure of a musician, some of those um, apps like uh, Launchpad or even the Borderlands app that I've just shown you because I mean I, I've worked with a couple of um, music therapists in recent years who have really embraced the idea of using new technologies you know combined with some of the more traditional instrumental approaches and you know initially they're always looking for something that's quite easy to learn to use for the therapist the music therapist themselves um, but very quickly to move on from those very simple apps once you pick up the basics of this idea of um, point, press, play, um, then, you know, it, very quickly they want to explore slightly more advanced apps. So, as I say, there, there are a number of those different apps. I've just concentrated on iPad apps today, but there are a couple of other um, pieces of music software that you can use other interfaces to control as well. But I'm happy to to you know, provide some more information. Really good question. Uh, I any more questions? 
Uh, I would like to uh, inform that uh, presentations will be uh, sent to participants after the conference. So you will have uh, the presentation that Frank prepared. Um, I think it's a question from you. There is, there is one more question. Uh, what point do you start looking at cost for the user? Uh, how into it does the person have to be before you might look at suggest, uh, suggesting participants spend money for the mainstream getting uh, gear tends uh, to become an obsession? Yeah, so, yeah, I, I call this option anxiety. A great jazz musician came up with that phrase. There's just like so many options, so many technologies, so many tablets even to start with. And I think, well, what we found over the years is essentially you've really got to be quite ruthless and narrow your focus and say, I'm going to use, you know, and there's so many, so many, uh, even secondhand um, Apple iPads out there now that run all of this. I mean, it doesn't really take a very advanced um, uh, new iPad to run most of these apps. Most of these apps I was running on an iPad one or two, got one sitting in the corner of my room here. So you can pick, you can pick the, the hardware, the, the tablet up quite cheaply, whether it's iOS or whether it's Android, most of the apps run on both, some of them only on one or the other, but you can pick the hardware up very cheaply. And then, as I say, most of these apps you can download for free and you can then say, okay, well, I'm going to learn how to use the free capability of this particular app before I start purchasing, um, you know, add-on sound packs or so on. And I think that, so the user has just got to be really ruthless and set themselves clear goals. You know, I'm not moving on to a new piece of technology, whether it's an app, until I've created five pieces of music, original pieces of music with the technology as, a, as I've got it. So it's, I suppose, like anything in life, you've got to limit yourself. And as one of the great composers, Olivier Messiaen, once said, the charm of impossibilities, if you actually limit it, deliberately limit the resources that you're working with, then you tend to dig a lot deeper and end up with a more organic final product. So that's that's my advice, Hugh. Okay, Frank, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we had already many interesting questions and thank you for amazing presentation. So please let's mm -hmm. make a, a applause for Frank. It was really, really great. Thank you.